Okay, so on two separate days in class, we were trying to derive the relationship between the proper length measured in the rest frame of, uh, of an object and the length measured in any other frame moving relative to the object. And uh, on both days, I actually did make an error, and I made the same error both times. This is a really good example of not being careful about the definitions of uh, of the of the properties in special relativity, and in particular the definitions of what two events we're measuring time between. Uh, it was a case of a, a very basic, straightforward uh, derivation, but me not carefully looking at my notes and thinking, and just thinking, oh, this is easy, I can I can solve it. And in both cases, I actually it turns out even though there were different derivations, I made the same mistake. And so I want to take the time uh, to to resolve that mistake, do uh, the quick derivation, which really isn't very difficult, um, and move on to where we can do some examples. So I'm going to do this on a video lecture. Uh, since we're going to miss class on Friday, I just thought rather than wasting more time doing this derivation yet again in class, uh, that we could get it out of the way and move on on Wednesday. So. Here's the situation that we set up in the first case, right, where I said, well, you know, it's really hard to synchronize your watches and then have two people move and stay synchronized, etc. But let's just go back to that case and show that that really wasn't a problem as long as we're careful about what we're defining our events to be. Nothing's a problem as long as we're careful about what we're defining our events to be. Um, so let me draw the picture. So we can start with, let's say we're going to measure the, uh, the length of this object, this red object. Let's call it a meter stick, although we're going to have people walking, and so maybe it's a mile stick or something like that. Um, and let's just set up the situation that we did the first time and say that we have two people synchronize their watches, start in the middle, and walk to the ends. This is actually not going to be relevant to the measurement, and you'll see why in a second. Um, <clears throat> even though it is a difficult thing to do to synchronize your watches and keep them synchronized, you've got to be pretty careful about that. But regardless, let's say we can do it. Um, and so we have these two people walk to the ends. And then when they get to the ends, they stop. And so they're able to measure, right? So Frank is F, and Frank's going to get to this end, and Mary is M, and Mary's going to get to this end. And when they do that, they're going to measure their positions relative to their axis. Let's say their axis has the length scale on it. And Frank measures his position, X Frank, X Frank is equal to 0. And Mary measures her position, X Mary, is equal to 1. So let's say it's one unit long, one mile, one meter, whatever. So according to the frame O, they're both in the frame O. They're both stationary relative to the frame O. Indeed, delta X, which is XM minus XF, or that's X Mary minus X Frank, is indeed one. And, or let's just, just define that as, okay, so that's the unit of length one, and we'll just call that L0, right? The, the length in the stationary frame. Okay, fine. So we've got a length in the stationary frame. But don't worry about all of that detail because it turns out all of that detail was not necessary. And here's why. So what is the time difference between when Frank and Mary measure their, measured their positions? Well, we said, uh, well, I mean, they me let's have them measure at the same time. If we have them measure at the same time, then we don't have to worry about if the meter stick or the mile stick or the object, the red object moves later on if they measure them at the same time. So they could measure them in their frame of reference with a time difference of zero if they synchronize their watches carefully and they're careful about them staying synchronized. But if the meter stick does not move in their frame of reference and they don't move in their frame of reference, then delta T could also be anything. It could be anything at all. It doesn't matter whether they measure them at it at the same time or not, as long as they're sure that nobody's moved, right? So delta T in that frame can actually be anything. It doesn't matter. They can still measure delta X equals L0. But by defining delta T here, and this is the important concept where we got to be careful about what, what, by defining delta X and delta T, what we're defining. Delta X and delta T define the change in position and the change in time between two events. The event in this case is Frank measuring the position where he is and Mary measuring the position where she is. Okay? So now when we move into the moving frame, we're going to have to define two events, and it turns out that those are not the same two events, so we can't use the Lorentz transformation to transform between them. The Lorentz transformation is transforming between two events in the prime frame and the same two events in the end prime frame. 
Uh, and you'll see that you'll see what I mean in a second if if that's not obvious. But the point is is that the, these two events of Frank measuring his position and Mary measuring her position are not the same two events that we're going to be talking about in the other frame. So we can't use Lorentz transformation. So now I'm going to add somebody who's trying to measure the length from a moving frame. So let's put a spaceship in and say, okay, um, let's say John is on the spaceship and he wants to measure the length of the uh, the meter stick. Now the frame of reference is attached to John's spaceship and it's moving at speed v and it moves from one end of the meter stick to the other end of the meter stick. If John wants to measure the length of the meter stick, John has to measure from John's frame of reference the length of the meter stick. The only way John can measure the length of the meter stick is to uh, take the speed that John is going and the amount of time that it takes for John to go from one end of the meter stick to the other end of the meter stick. Now John is in the prime frame, so we're going to say delta T prime. Um, oh, I never, I never did show John, but John is here on the spaceship. So again, John flies from the left end of the space of the of the meter sticks, starts his stopwatch. He flies at speed v relative to the meter stick. He gets to the right end of the meter stick, and he stops his stopwatch. So John measures a time delta t, and John measures therefore his distance that he's gone is v delta. I'm uh, sorry, delta t prime. And so John measures a time a, 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 a distance that he's gone of v delta t prime. Now here, let me again say here's the key. The delta t prime between the two events that John was measuring were the event of John being at the left end of the meter stick and John being at the right end of the meter stick. The two events that we had talked about with Frank and Mary were Frank measuring the left end of the meter stick and Mary measuring the right end of the meter stick. Those are not the same two events. So we can't compare this delta T to that delta T. Those two don't compare because they're not measuring the time between the same two events in two different frames. They're measuring the time between two different events in two different frames. So we can't relate them in any way. Okay, so there you go. I've annotated this a little bit showing that delta T prime measures the time between two particular events. Delta T measures the time between two other events. So since they're not both measuring the time between the same two events just looked at from two different frames, they don't have a relationship. They don't have a proper time, uh, improper time relationship. So what we do need to do is ask from Frank and Mary's point of view, what is the time between John leaving the left end and John arriving at the right end? That measures the time between the same two events. That's what we're interested in. So let's go to a new page. Okay, so what time do Frank and Mary measure between John leaving the left end and arriving at the right end? Well, Frank and Mary are in the unprimed frame, so they measure time delta t. And since distance equals rate times time, then they must measure delta t equals L0 over V because John's moving at speed V relative to them, right? Or L0 equals V delta t. Okay, so now this time... This time is the time, the, the time between the same two events that John was measuring, right? John was measuring the, the time between the event that he left the left end and arrived at the right end, and now Frank and Mary are measuring the time that he left the, light, the, the left end and arrived at the right end. According to them, he's traveling a speed V. They've already measured the, uh, the length of the stick as L0 in their own frame of reference. Um, and so now this delta T and the other delta T prime are me and, and John's delta T prime are measuring the time between the same two events. So now all we have to do is yet again ask the same question I keep on asking, but then, you know, getting an answer that didn't make sense, um, is ask what's the relationship between these two times? Uh, these two times are both measuring the time between the same two events from the point of view of two different reference frames. One of these is a proper time, the other one is not. Which one is the proper time? The proper time is the person who has the watch present at both events. We have carefully defined our events to be John leaving left end, John arriving at right end. Frank is staying at the left end, Mary's staying at the right end. So the person who has the same watch at both events, at both ends, is John. So this delta T prime is the proper time. And so, therefore, the, uh, the proper time is always the shortest time, and every other time is gamma times the proper time. So, therefore, the, any time measured in any other reference frame must be 
longer, so it's gamma delta t prime, where delta t prime is the proper time. So, looking at these two relationships, then, it should be pretty clear, by just looking at the two equations in the middle of the page, that L0 must be gamma L. L0 equals gamma L. The length of an object measured in its rest frame, which is L0, is always the longest length, and in any other frame, L is going to be also L0 of gamma, L is going, the length measured from any frame moving by an object's rest frame is going to measure the object to be smaller. Remember that gamma is always greater than or equal to 1. So if gamma is bigger than 1, then L is always going to be smaller than L0. Or less than or equal to L0, um, equal to L0 if gamma is 1. So again, I'd like to reiterate that the issue here, and I did make the mistake twice um, in two different, two different derivations where I was trying to measure the same, do the same thing. But the issue here is carefully defining what our two events are. My first event was John leaving the left hand end, dot, 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 dot. My second event was John reaching the right end. And then if I want to use the proper time versus improper time interval or the proper length versus improper length in, um, uh, relationship or just the Lorentz transformations, I've got to be looking at the same two events from the point of view of a different frame of reference. So, but it's just got to be the same two events. And in both cases, I somehow managed to just be thinking about two completely different things that were two, two different things that were happening in the two different frames. I wasn't looking at the same two events. A very basic thing Thing, a very basic and you know it's just me not being careful and when you're solving these problems you got to be careful to define your events say these are the two events event one event two I'm gonna measure the time and distance between them in one frame I'm gonna measure time between the same two events in another frame once we do that this was a pretty trivial derivation okay now let's just now let's just summarize and just remember that proper length is defined as the length of an object in its own reference frame uh, if sorry in its own Yes, in its own reference frame or its own rest frame. That's the proper length. And in any other frame that moves relative to it, it looks shorter. Whereas proper time is the amount of time measured between two events by a watch that is present at both events. And any other time is longer. So when we write down the equations for proper length and proper time, remember they have the sort of inverse relationship, right? L0 is gamma L, whereas T0 is T over gamma. Okay, the last thing I want to say is that in relativity, we talk about distances, uh, about different kinds of distances. We call, talk about the distance between two events, that's delta x. Right, the distance between two events, delta x or delta x prime. We talk about the length of something, that's L or L0. And L and L0 are not necessarily, they might be, but are not necessarily related to delta x and delta x prime. For example, John's spaceship that went from the left end of the object to the right end of the object, delta x for John, or delta x prime, sorry, it was the moving frame, delta x prime for John was zero, right? Because he carried his... Um, his axis with him. So his delta x prime was zero, yet he knows he traveled a distance. He traveled a length, and his length was L. Um, so this is the distance between two events. Whereas L is a length, and those are not necessarily the same thing. right? Again, if we've got... Um, uh, uh, some distance and John starts from the left end and goes to the right end if John's axis according to John's axis his axis travels with him then according to his axis if he's in the moving frame then delta x prime was equal to zero but he knows that he was moving at speed v for a time delta t prime, so he knows he's moved a distance l equals v uh, delta t prime. So l and delta x prime are not the same thing, right? Length and distance between two events are not the same thing. Uh, in addition, there is a, yet another distance that we measure 
in relativity, and it's called proper distance. That's a new quantity. Proper distance is neither distance nor length nor proper length. Proper distance is defined as delta s. Proper distance, the quantity delta s, is defined in this way. Delta s squared is delta x squared plus delta y squared plus delta z squared. It's a three-dimensional length, or if it's in one dimension, then it would be just delta x squared, minus c delta t squared. So proper distance delta s is a completely different quant quantity. That's it in three dimensions. In one dimension, it would be delta x squared minus c delta t squared. We define this quantity, delta s, proper distance, because it, it turns out, and this is something to be shown as an exercise later, that delta s is invariant between reference frames. What does that mean to be invariant? It means that it doesn't change, right? Length changes. According to John's frame of reference, the length of the meter stick was L. According to Frank and Mary, the length of the meter stick was L0. Length changes. Proper distance does not change. It's invariant. If we measure a delta S in one reference frame, it is the same in all reference frames. It's a really important quantity for that reason because it's an invariant quantity. So it allows us to solve for, um, it allows us to use it like a conservation law, right? Delta S is conserved between reference frames. Unlike energy, right, we talked today about how energy is not conserved between reference frames. It's conserved uh, between two events in the same reference frame, uh, but it's not conserved between reference frames. Delta S is the same in the moving frame as it is in the stationary frame. We haven't shown that. That's left to be an exercise, but it's a really important distinction to make between delta S and any other quantity, but also just making sure we understand that we actually have three different kinds of distances, right? We've got distance between events, we've got lengths, and we've got proper distances between events. Delta S is a proper distance between events that, is, that has to do with both the, the, the distance and the time between that event. Okay, so just, just in case you missed it, right, the first, the, the first line here, this is in three dimensions, and actually we're really mostly just dealing with one dimension, so if we don't want, worry about the y and z direction, then delta s squared is just that. Okay, so now we've defined everything uh, that we need to define in special relativity. We can actually start doing some problems. We've defined all the kinematic properties, really. Um, there's still dynamics, energy conservation, and such that we're going to spend a little time with. But now that we've defined those, uh, these quantities, we can actually start doing problems. That's what we'll start in class on Wednesday. So in summary, all we've really done is we've written down the Lorentz transformations, how we transform between two reference frames, and the uh, proper... This, the proper length and the um, proper time are results of the Lorentz transformation. Um, and then we have this new quantity, proper distance, which is this. So that's a summary of everything, and now we're going to apply it to different problems.